Number 49. For the past 10 years, the unsaturated hydrocarbon 1,3-butadiene, which is CH2 double bound to a CH, single bound to a CH, double bound to a CH2, has ranked 38th among the top 50 industrial chemicals. Ooh, do they have like award ceremonies for industrial chemicals? That's pretty cool. Um, it's used primarily for the manufacture of synthetic rubber. How cool is that? And an isomer exists also as cyclo. Butene. Cyclo means that your carbons are in a ring fashion. And if you have four carbons, it will turn out to be a square. Um, let's keep going. The isomerization of cyclobutene to butadiene is first order, and the rate constant has been measured as 2.0 times 10 to the negative fourth per second at 150 degrees Celsius in a 0.53 liter flask. Determine the partial pressure of cyclobutene and its concentration after 30 minutes if an isomerization reaction is carried out at 150 degrees Celsius with an initial pressure of 50 torr. Okay, a lot of stuff being thrown at us, right? But we'll take it one highlight at a time. They did say us that this, they did tell us that this was first order reaction, right? And they give us rate constants. We see a lot of numbers here. So if we're dealing with first order chemical kinetics, we have two formulas that we can use. And here are the two first order equations. There's two zero order equations and two second order equations that you may have to memorize for your test or quiz. But here are all the ones that we're allowed to use for this question uh, because they say that it's first order. Now, they already gave us the rate constant, right? The rate constant is a K value. And they told us that the K was 2.0 times 10 to the negative fourth, and that's per second, seconds to the minus one. They tell us we have a temperature and a volume. Cool. Now they want us to find out the partial pressure and the concentration after a generalized time, right? They told us that they wanted it in 30 minutes. So 30 minutes. If the initial pressure, so initial pressure, initial amount. And they told us that the initial amount was 55 torr. Beautiful. So the first thing is, which equation are we going to use? Well, let's see. They give us initial amounts, a K value, and a random time. That's this information for this, for this formula. Now this T with a subscript one half is specifically the half-life. If we were going to use this formula, they would have had to ask for what was the half-life or they would have said the half-life is. But in this case, when they told us about that time, 30 minutes, they just said, you know, determine this partial pressure at this amount of time. This time is an arbitrary amount of time. It's not the actual half-life. So in this case, we don't even care about this equation. Bye-bye to that. And I'm just going to get rid of this because this is the first formula that we're going to use. So now let's just dissect it. Ln of A equals negative KT plus Ln of A zero. Now there's two A values here. There's one that has a zero subscript and one that has nothing to it, just A. The zero one means zero time has gone by. That is your initial amount. Now, the beauty about this formula is that you can use a lot of units for this, this formula. You could plug in percents, you could plug in fractions, you can plug in grams, you can plug in molarity, moles, and even pressure values. And yes, the units do not matter. So this, this formula doesn't discriminate between tor, millimeters of mercury, ATM. The only thing is that if you're going to say that you have an initial pressure, an initial amount, of 55 tor, that means that your final amount, what unit do you think that that final amount is going to be in? You are absolutely correct. It's got to be in tor. So if you're starting off with tor, tor is going to come out. And that's what we're basically finding out. The partial pressure is just a fancy way for saying, find the pressure of the cyclobutene, right? So this is what we're solving for. We're solving for X. How much is remaining after the 30 minutes? And they gave us a time value, 30 minutes. 
and they gave us a, a rate constant. So it looks like we're ready to go. 2.0 times 10 to the negative fourth seconds to the minus one. But hold that phone because always just do a double check to make sure that your time units are the same. Your K value, one of the unit is based off of seconds, and your time is in minutes. Me personally, I always like to convert my time into the rate constant units. So what I'll do is I'll convert the minutes into the seconds. Minutes to seconds, all you got to do is just times by 60. So 30 times 60. 1800. 1800 seconds. Oh, whoa, 1800 seconds. Now, let's just plug it in. Solve for x. Ln of x equals negative. We got the 2.0 times, oh boy. Christina, grip the pen correctly. 2.0 times 10 to the negative fourth times, oh boy, is this, ay, 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 1800 for the time, plus your LN of your initial amount, which they said was 55 tor. Now, if you have a TI-84, right, TI-84 CE, you could plug all this in in one shot. Make sure that you keep that negative in there. So... I'm going to say negative 2.0 times 10 to the negative fourth times 1800 plus ln of 55, close those parentheses, press enter, bada bing, bada boom, 3.647. We're getting close. We want just x equals. And how are we going to do that? Well, it's attached to the ln, natural log, so the inverse of ln is e to the, but you got to be fair. If you do e on this side, you got to do e on the other side. So the e will cancel out, and now we just get x equals. So e raised to that value, you get roughly 38.4. And they gave me two sig figs for the pressure, so maybe we'll give two sig figs back. 38 tor. Okay, first part done. That was fun. Now, I believe there was a second part because they said, determine the partial pressure, check, 38 tor. But now we want to convert that pressure into concentration. So now I say to myself, hmm, okay. Well, we already did kinetics, right? It seems like for this, all we have to do is now take that pressure value and convert it into a concentration, which is a molarity. All right, so I got pressure, hmm, molarity, which is moles and liters. Uh, they gave me a temperature, right? So I say to myself, and they gave me a liters, right? So I say to myself, what formula can relate a pressure with the volume and a temperature, moles? You got it. It's coming back. PV equals NRT. Now, Let's see, we are solving for molarity. <laughs> um, we maybe can manipulate this equation because I'm just going to put up here, big bad molarity, big bad molarity equals moles over liters. And in this formula, moles is the N value, right? So if I can just say, if I can get an N divided by an L, that's a molarity. Now, in this case, PB equals NRT, the liters is the volume. And for PB equals NRT, the volume has to be in liters. So if I can just divide by volume on both sides, right? We're just manipulating a little bit. This is one way of doing it, by the way. You don't have to do it this way, but I kind of want you to start seeing, you know, that, you know, different relationships with formulas. If I take my N divided by my V, right? This is the same as saying N divided by V, right? The liters is the volume. I can, let me get rid of this. I can say that N divided by V is molarity. So now I have a new formula, which is just pressure equals, maybe I'll put that in a new, maybe N over V equals M. And now you have MRT. 
Love it, right? Because then from here, we can solve for molarity. Now, the only thing is, if you're using this, this, this formula, which is a derivation of PV equals NRT, your pressure has to be in ATM. Aye, 38 tor. So maybe what I'll do is, maybe, let's see. Um, hmm, let's see. Maybe pause the video if you need to. I'm just going to get rid of this, if I may, because I just need a little bit more room. So if you do need to write it down, just pause the video, you know, write out whatever you got to write out, but bye bye it's going. It's going, but we have more room, right? We know that now this is the partial pressure, so I'll say this is partial pressure. And we're going to bring this over. Okay. So if we're going to use P equals MRT, that 38 tor, that has to be converted into ATM. How are we going to convert 38 into ATM? Ah, tor to ATM, all we have to do is just divide by 760. So I'm going to take my 38, divide it by 760. And I get 0 0.05 ATM. Okay, so we have that. The molarity is what we're trying to solve for, for so for X. And then R, remember, that's that constant value, 0 0.0821 or... 8206 to be more exact. The units for R is ATM times liter over mole times Kelvin. So that's why this equation needs to be super, super, super specific. And if you're using capital T, which is temp, we need to have it in Kelvin. They told us that we're at 150 degrees Celsius. So just go to Kelvin by adding 273 or 273.15 just to be more exact. So I'll do 150 plus 273.15 and you get 423.15. All right, now we are ready. Let's solve for molarity. Pressure was 0 0.05 equals X times 0 0.08206 times 423.15, which is maybe 0 0.08206 times that number. Looks good to me. 0 0.05 equals 34.72, and that's times by X, which is the molarity we want to solve. So 34.72 on both sides. So 0 0.05 divided by that number. Let's see what we get. There we go. X equals 1.4. And I mean, I guess we'll do two sig figs. So 1.4 times 10 to the negative third. And that's your molarity. And there we go. So we have our partial pressure, which was 38 tor. And then we have the corresponding molarity which was 4.1.4 uh, times 10 to the negative three. Now in this case, you might say, well, wait a minute, we didn't use the liters. That's only if you did PV equals NRT, then you would plug the liters in. But if you already just kind of have that as a molarity, that 0.53 is already in that molarity unit. So we didn't have to use that. And that's it for this one. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys in my spare time. I try to get to as many, um, you know, uh, comments as I can. And just keep working hard. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for being part of the community. We're almost at uh, 40,000 subscribers, and it's all because of you guys. It's absolutely nuts. We have tons more to offer for you guys, and we just want to help you guys keep learning. And that's how you grow, all right? I want you to do well on those tests and quizzes. And I hope you're having a great day out there. Keep studying hard. Proud of you. And I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye-bye.